And we're now live. Good evening, Brantford, and welcome to Canadian Kahoot Trivia. We are just going to give everyone a few minutes to start or to log on, and we're going to start just shortly after seven o'clock. If you are watching the live stream right now on YouTube, you can log on earlier. You can go to the website kahoot.it, go on your laptop, on your TV, uh, whatever device, or sorry, on your phone. You can go to kahoot.it and then enter the PIN number 515-6868. Enter your email address and we'll get started shortly. Good evening, Brantford, and uh, welcome to Canadian Kahoot Trivia. And do see a few of you are starting to log on, which is fantastic. Uh, for those of you who are on the YouTube channel right now and are wondering uh, what to do next, uh, take your mobile device, either a tablet or your phone. You can go to the website kahoot.it, so www.kahoot.it. And you'll be prompted to enter in a PIN number. It's the one at the top of the screen, 515-6868. Once you do that, you'll be prompted to enter your email address and your username will be generated. At that time, you'll see the username pop up on the screen and you'll be set to go. If you do notice your username does pop off the screen, just usually uh, you need to Tap your phone, have it come back up on the screen and that should work. So we're just gonna give everyone a few more minutes. We're gonna start shortly after seven o'clock. I'm going to review the rules for this evening and we'll be all set to play some trivia.
Good evening, Brantford, and welcome to Canadian Kahoot Trivia. On behalf of Brantford's Canada Celebration Committee, I do want to welcome everyone. Thank you for taking time out of your evening on this Canada, Canada Day Eve to join us tonight for some trivia fun. We're just going to start in a couple of minutes. I do see some more people are logging in. And for those of you who are on the YouTube channel and are wondering what to do next, just follow the instructions at the top of the screen. So you'll see the website, www.kahoot.it. You can take your mobile device, such as your smartphone or tablet, go to this website, then enter in the pin at the top of this pin number at the top of the screen. So the 515-6868. Once you do that, you'll be asked to insert a email address, do that and a username will be generated and it will pop up on the screen. So we'll just give everyone another minute to log on. I do see that uh, the numbers are starting to climb and then we'll get started. Once again, good evening, Brantford. Welcome to Canadian Kahoot Trivia on this eve of Canada Day. My name is Brendan, and I'm going to be your host for this evening. And first of all, I did want to thank everyone again for taking the time out of their evening to join us tonight for some trivia and fun and uh, lots of great prizes ahead. And uh, first of all, I do want to also give a special thank you, a big shout out to Lasani Homes. They are our sponsor for this evening. We certainly couldn't put on the amazing programming and events that we do for Canada Day and beyond without the support of our community partners. So once again, Lasani, Lasani Homes, thank you so much for all of your support. So I do see we have quite a few people logged in. So I'm going to give one last reminder that if you are just joining us now on the YouTube channel, you'll see at the top, there is a website. Please take your tablet or cell phone and go to kahoot.it if you have not already done so and enter the pin number at the top. So that's the 515-6868 once you're there and then enter your email address and a username will be generated for you. So I'm going to start by explaining the rules. So once you've logged in, we're going to start with the questions. Uh, the phone that you're entering the pin number into that is going to be your joystick for this evening you're going to see buttons appear and you're going to use it to answer the questions the questions will pop up on the youtube screen and then can you answer them as quickly as possible points are awarded for accuracy and speed a player who answers correctly faster than others will earn more points throughout the evening and you need points to win the prizes if you don't know an answer, players are encouraged to guess and fast. There are time limits for each question. It'll be about 10 seconds each. After each question, we will go to the leaderboard. There you'll see a ticker. The names of, with the top answers will appear with the updated score. This will happen after each question, so it'll be updated throughout the game so you can see how well you're doing. Again, if you don't have a cell number and you're just watching, that's no problem. We do encourage you to play along, but you just won't be able to earn points. And in total, there are 47 questions, including two warm up ones. These will be a combination of multiple choice and true or false. For each question, there is only one correct answer that will earn you points. So 
So in total, the game should last about 45 minutes. And most important rule of all is to have fun. So anyways, we're here today to have fun, but most importantly, we have some fantastic prizes if you do end up on the podium this evening. So if you do come in third place, we'll start off there. You get a $25 gift card to Maria's Pizza. Fantastic local restaurants. Certainly we want to support our local businesses. Second place prize is a $25 gift card to Mercasa Little Italy Eatery here in Brantford. And then the grand prize, if you come in first place, you'll win a $50 gift card to Hudson Public Kitchen and Bar. Great restaurant, which is located in downtown Brantford in Harmony Square. After the game, if you're a winner, you will be contacted by email and we'll arrange to have these gift cards mailed out to you. All right, so just as one final reminder, as I do see some more people logging in, please go to the website on your phone or tablet, www.kahoot.it. Once there, you'll be prompted to enter a PIN number. It's the one you see at the top of the screen, the 515-6868. Enter your email address and your username will appear. All right, without further ado, it's time to get started. So we are going to move on to our warm up questions. Let's go. Three, two, one. All right, first question What game are we about to play? Kahoot Canadian Trivia. Monopoly, Clue, or Chess? So again, use your phone, your device, and answer the question, to see uh, what we have. Yep, so it looks like we have 37 answers. Everyone got it right. And yeah, sorry, if you were going to answer Monopoly, you are in the wrong game. So moving on. So here we have the scoreboard. It just shows who has answered the fastest, but this is a warm-up question, so there are no points allocated for this one. And likewise for the second warm up question, which is going to be a true or false. Well, Sonny Holmes is a proud sponsor of Canadian Kahoot Trivia. So I did mention this earlier. So you can answer on your phone, true or false. Yep, so the answer is absolutely true. So they are the proud sponsor of tonight and here, and we want to thank them again. Not sure if anyone is on the call from this company, but we certainly appreciate your generosity and support to make tonight happen for everyone. All right, without further ado, so we've had enough testing uh, trial runs for the multiple choice and true or false. So let's head on to the first question. This one will be worth points. First question. Excluding the stem, how many points are there on the maple leaf on the flag of Canada? 21, 5, 14, or 11? Just a few more seconds on the clock. Oh, and it's split across the board. The correct answer is there's only 11 points on there. So well done. Looks like 11 people coincidentally got that one correct. So let's check out the leaderboard to see who those people were. Okay, looks like Fast Hawk is the fastest one after all. So uh, Fast Hawk has 942 points. Uh, very close behind is Speedy Otter with 940. Wonder Wolf comes close behind with 931. Great Llama with 928. And Sturdy Bear with 923. So we do have a close race. So let's head on to the next question. Who was the first female governor general of Canada? Was it Mikhail Jean, Adrian Clarkson, Jean Sauvé, or Kim Campbell? Oh, so again, answer split across the board. The correct answer was Jean Sauvé. Uh, Mikhail Jean and Adrian Clarkson came, I believe, within the last 20 years. And Kim Campbell was not the governor general at all. She actually was our first female prime minister. So let's check out the leaderboard again. Oh, so we got some changes. Looks like Wonder Wolf knew the answer to that one, pulled into first place with 18, 20 points. Uh, Space Penguin is not far behind with 17, 68. So Fast Hawk right now is still on the podium with uh, 942 points. So 
And it looks like uh, up three places, Tropical Emu is the highest climber. Next question. What is not a way that a beaver uses their tail? Is it for fat storage, drag sticks in mud, rudder when swimming, or helps bet with balance when standing? Yep, so the correct answer is actually they don't use their tail to drag sticks or mud. I do believe that they use their big teeth for that. And it uh, looks like about 12 people got that correct. So well done. Let's check out the scores. All right, so it looks like the podium stay the same, but fast uh, Ignigna is up with 1639 and uh, only 10 points behind meeting the podium. So on to the next question. Consuming 55% more of it than Americans, what is Canadians' most purchased grocery item? Is it Kraft Dinner, Lay's Potato Chips, Heinz Ketchup, or any brand of maple syrup? Well done, looks like we got quite a few Kraft Dinner fans in the crowd and that was the most popular answer and it is the most popular grocery item here in Canada. We eat quite a lot more of it than the US does. Heading on to the leaderboard. Oh, looks like Wonder Wolf has dropped to third place and Space Penguin has taken the lead. Well done. And Fast Talk is uh, fast again with 2,589 points. Well done, looks like we have quite the race happening here. In 2020, Elon Musk and Canadian musician Grimes made news to birth their baby boy. What was he originally named? So this uh, made quite the news story last year, and I'm not even going to try to pronounce these names. Yep, so it looks like most of you were paying attention to this in the news last year. It uh, was uh, the answer C. So the baby's name had to be slightly changed change in order for it to be issued a birth certificate as numer numerical digits and babies' names are not allowed. So back over to the leaderboard. Oh, looks like that Sturdy Bear has the highest uh, answer streak of three and Space Penguin is still in the lead, but only a few points ahead of Fast Talk and Great Llama has entered the podium as well. Okay, so heading on to the next question. Gander Newfoundland was once welcomed 7,000 plane passengers inspiring the Come From Away musical. What emergency caused this? Was it Hurricane Gabrielle, Winter Blizzard, an airplane strike, or the 9-11 terrorist attacks? Oh, looks like we have quite a few people who saw the musical and are familiar with the story. It indeed was the September 11 terrorist attacks. And uh, with the... Um, Mervish hopefully opening soon. I do recommend anyone who hasn't seen this musical to go see it. It is one of my favorites. Checking out the leaderboard again. Oh, it looks like Fast Hawk has outpaced Space Penguin by a few points. Uh, Great Llama still on the leaderboard and followed by Wonder Wolf and Sturdy Bear. Okay, heading on to the next question. Name Newark at the time. What town was the original capital of Upper Canada? Is it Toronto, Kingston, Brantford, or Niagara on the Lake? All right, time's up. Oh, most people didn't get that correct. It actually was Niagara on the Lake. For the first five years, Toronto formally called York was not the original capital city. It was five years after that that it went to Toronto. So going back to the leaderboard, looks like everything's still the same. So let's head on to the next question. Canadian actor Ryan Reynolds stars with Sandra Bullock in The Proposal. In the movie, where is her character's hometown? Is it Juneau, Alaska, Honolulu, Hawaii, Toronto, Ontario, or New York, New York? Yep, so definitely a Canadian connection there. She was from Toronto. Uh, the movie does take place in Alaska, but that's not where she is from. The plot centers on a Canadian executive who learns that she may face deportation from the US because of her expired visa. Sandra Bullock's character would have been sent back to Toronto had that happened. 
So it looks like we had quite a few proposal fans in the audience who have seen this movie. Uh, Space Penguin being one of them is now in the top spot and Glowing Hen has also entered the leaderboard in third place with 4,325 points. Um, not far behind Fast Talk. All right, let's head on to the next question. What province or territory is the home of Canada's highest mountain? Was it Alberta, Yukon, British Columbia, or Quebec? Yep, so the correct answer is Yukon. So the name of the mountain is actually Mount Logan. It's the highest mountain. Heading back onto the leaderboard. Oh, lots of changes there. Looks like Fast Hawk is now in first place with 5,331 points. Uh, Great Llama is not far behind. Space Penguin is in third place. And then also it looks like that Silver Lark has jumped up 14 places as a result of that. So well done. Just a reminder, speed and accuracy is the key to get lots of points here. Heading on to the next question. Rose Apothecary and the Rosebud Motel are fictional places in what Canadian TV show? It's Corner Gas, Letterkenny, Schitt's Creek, or Trailer Park Boys. Oh, and for 40 of you, you are my best friend. This is one of my favorite TV shows ever. It is Schitt's Creek. Fantastic show. I'm sorry that it had to end uh, recently, but it's a great show. So as a result, let's check out uh, the changes in scores. Oh, it looks like Glowing Hen has an answer streak of three in a row correctly. Fast Hawk's still in the lead, but uh, Wonder Wolf has re-entered the leaderboard or the podium with 6,149 points in third place. According to John McRae's poem in Flanders Field, where do poppies blow? Is it onto the crosses row on row, above the crosses row on row, between the crosses row on row, or the memorial garden in the snow? Uh, looks like the majority of you know the poem. It is definitely between the crosses, row on row. Okay, so with that said, let's check out the scores. Oh, Fast Hawk got that one, just extended the lead there to 7,139 points, but it is very close behind. Wonder Wolf has 7,072 points and Great Llama's not far off. Okay, next question. The last time that the Leafs won the Stanley Cup was in 67. What NHL team did they beat? Was it the Edmonton Oilers, the Montreal Canadiens, the Calgary Flames, or the Ottawa Senators? So the correct answer was the Habs. And the clue here was that the Edmonton Oilers, the Calgary Flames, and the Ottawa Senators were actually not part of the NHL in the 1967 season. I believe that they came later in the 70s or 80s and the Ottawa Senators uh, joined back again in the 1990s. So we got a, quite a few hockey fans in the crowd, I can tell. So let's see how that affects the scores. Oh, Fast Hawk has dropped and a Wonder Wolf has taken the lead with 7,971 points, followed by Great Llama. And it looks like that clever Tiger has uh, jumped up seven places and is the highest climber of this round. Well done. Alanis Morissette's song, You Oughta Know, features two guitarists from what North American rock band? Was it Nirvana, Simple Plan, Sum 41, or the Red Hot Chili Peppers? Oh, split across the board, but it was definitely the Red Hot Chili Peppers. So that would be Dave Navarro and Flea from that band performed on this track. The other bands actually didn't exist at the time that the song was written or released. So Nirvana would have uh, ended with the death of Kurt Cobain beforehand and then some 41 Simple Plan came afterwards. So we did have quite a few Atlantis, song, uh, sorry, Atlantis fans in the audience. So let's see how they did with the scores. All right, so Great Llama has come back uh, up to 8,560 points. 
followed by Wonder Wolf, Fast Talk, and looks like Glowing Hen and Silver Urchin are not far behind. So we've got a tight race. It's anyone's game now. So let's head on to the next question. Before being taken out of circulation in 1996, Canada's $2 bill featured what bird on the river side? Was it a Canada goose, a blue jay, a loon, or an American robin? Yep, so the answer actually is not something that was technically Canadian at all. It was a brown American robin was on the back side of the bill. So a few of you did remember that. So let's check out how you did. Silver Urchin, wow, definitely jumped up to second place to answer or second place with that with 8,125 points. Uh, but Great Llama is not far behind, or sorry, above. So let's go to the next question. It is part two of this one. Who was featured on the front side of our $2 bill? Was it the Queen? Lester B. Pearson, John Diefenbaker, or Justin Bieber. Yeah, so the correct answer was the Queen. She was also featured on the $1,000 bill before that was taken out of circulation, but is still on the $20 bill right now. So the majority of you did that get that one correct. And for those of you who picked Justin Bieber, I'm not sure he was born at that time. Oh, it looks like Great Llama extended the lead at 9,336 points and Fast Hawk has jumped up to second place. So we definitely got a tight match. Wonder Wolf is only about 20 points behind in third place. Heading on to the next question. North America's largest annual single day parade is hosted in Toronto. What one is it? St. Patrick's Day, Pride, Carabana, or the Santa Claus Parade? Yep, so most of you actually did get that one correct. It is Carabana. So the image shown before actually was of the Toronto Raptors victory parades through downtown Toronto, but it's uh, Carabana is the single largest annual parade. And hopefully with COVID getting a bit more under control in future years, we'll see a return of these great events. We can visit them once again. Checking out the leaderboard again. It looks like Great Llama knew that answer, probably has been to Carabana, and then looks like Glowing Hen and Silver Urchin aren't that far behind. So definitely a close race, it's anyone's game. Next question. In 1923, what medical discovery or invention resulted in a Canadian winning the Nobel Prize in medicine? Pablum, insulin, Childproof medicine containers or Buckley's cough syrup. Yes, looks like the majority of people got that correct. It was a proud moment in Canadian history and still is. It was the discovery of insulin. So though all answers were indeed Canadian, it was Frederick Banting who was one of the two men who did receive the prize in medicine that year as co-discoverers of it. All right, so it looks like most people got that correctly and it did not impact the leaderboard whatsoever. And it looks like 10 players are on a hot streak with answering three in a row. Well done, keep up the great work. Heading over to the next question, get your phones ready. True or false? In the official rules of lacrosse, only defenders and goalies can touch the ball with their hands. True or false? Couple more seconds on the clock. Oh, split, but it is false. You know, the clue is here is it's actually only goalies that can touch it with their hands, like most sports. Defenders cannot. All right, so 30 people are going to earn points with that one, and it has changed the leaderboard. So Glowing Hen is in the lead with 11,387 points, followed by Great Llama and Wonder Wolf not far behind. But again, it's still a close race, only a few hundred points separate them. One question could make that difference. Heading on to the next true or false question. 
Canadian artist Tom Thompson's famous oil painting, The Jack Pine, features himself paddling a canoe in the background. True or false? All right, so time's up and oh, looks like I did trick a few of you. I completely made that statement up. Uh, Tom Thompson, I believe, just painted nature and scenery. He did not paint himself in any of his paintings from as far as I know, and certainly not himself in the background in a canoe, though he is reported to have died in a canoe accident, which, is he, which he is famous for. So 18 people did get that right. Let's check out the scores. So Wonder Wolf, obviously an art fan, got that one correct and is had to back up to second place with 11,685 points. And uh, we got Great Llama behind and Glowing Hen still in the lead. Next, true or false? Alexander Graham Bell's middle name was given to him as a birthday present. True or false? And there we have a picture of him making the first phone, long distance phone call between Brantford and Paris. Yeah, believe it or not, it was completely true. He asked for a birthday present of a middle name and he got Graham as it. So 28 people got that correct. Well done. Let's see how that impacts the scores. So Aquatic New is uh, back in the top five, but Glowing Hen is still in the lead followed by Wonder Wolf and Great Llama. All right, so let's head on to the next true or false question. The largest single day snowfall in Canada was about 145 centimeters, about the height of a 10 year old kid. True or false? Yep, so the majority of people got that correct. It is absolutely true. On February 11th, 1999, about 145 centimeters of snow fell in the town of Totsa Lake, British Columbia in just 24 hours. But of course, snow is the last thing that we're ha we have on our mind in this heat on the eve of Canada Day. So let's head on to the leaderboard. So Glowing Hen got that correct again. Great Llama has headed up into second place, followed by Wonder Wolf with 12,647 points. Next question, another true or false. The prominent red symbol on the Nunavut flag is a maple tree. It's a couple more seconds. Time is up. Yep, so the majority of you got the answer correct and the picture actually was a clue that what is on the flag is a red inuk shuck. Let's see how that impacts the scores. Do we have any changes this time? Oh, looks like Lucky Leopard has headed up into fifth, fifth place with 12,587 points. Not far behind uh, the others, but Glowing Hen is still in the lead with 15,041 points. Okay, let's head on to the next question. In 2020, what was the most popular Tim Hortons donut sold in Ontario? Was it an apple fritter, maple dip, honey crawler, or chocolate glaze? See how many people we have with sweet tooths in the crowd. Yep, so it was split across the board, but for the apple fritters and fans in the audience, it definitely was the apple fritter. So let's check out how that impacted the scores. Oh, it looks like Silver Urchin has uh, come back into the leaderboard in fifth place, but the top, uh, top scores have remained the same. Next question. According to Smithsonian Magazine, what Canadian town or city is considered the waterfall capital of the world? Niagara Falls, Banff, Kelowna, or Hamilton, Ontario? Oh, it looks like that was split across the board between Niagara Falls and Hamilton. Niagara Falls might have one of the most spectacular waterfalls and is a world wonder, but it definitely is Hamilton. Since it has its home to over 150 waterfalls, it, it has the most for any city in the world and therefore is considered the waterfall capital of the world. 
Wow, so certainly we have a brand new leaderboard here. Uh, Glowing Hen still remains in the lead, but the top uh, second, third, and fourth place has changed. So it's followed by Wonder Wolf, Aquatic New, and then Space Penguin, not that far behind. And any, uh, any change in score can certainly uh, shake this all up. So well done and good luck to everyone. Let's continue on. In 2013, what official title did the Toronto Raptors give to fan and musician Drake? Was it Global Raptor, Global Diplomat, Global Ambassador, or Raptor King? Yes, most of you got that correct. So it looks like we got quite a few Raptors and Drake fans in the crowd tonight. Yeah, the answer is Global Ambassador. Checking out the scores now. Oh, it looks like we have some changes. Oh, Speedy Otter has the highest hot streak right now with six in a row. Well done. That has pushed Speedy Otter into fourth place. So the top three better watch out for him or her. But Glowing Hen is in the lead. Aquatic New is in second place, followed by Wonder Wolf. Heading back on to the next question. The name Canada likely comes from the Huron Iroquois word Kanada, meaning what? Is it brave people, beautiful land, patriot, or village, or settlement? So for those of you who did watch the Heritage Moments back in the day, this was a prominent one, and the correct answer is village or settlement. But I do have to agree uh, with those of you who did guess beautiful land, which was a second place answer. Uh, certainly it is, um, but unfortunately that is not the correct answer. So let's check out the scores, how they've changed. All right, so we've got quite a few people duking it out for second, third, and fourth place. Wonder Wolf is only ahead by a few points ahead of Speedy Otter, but Glowing Hen has maintained the lead. Next question. Who was born on Christmas Day in 1971? So this particular person is famous for being a Christmas baby. Yeah, I mean, a few people, quite a few people knew that because uh, when his uh, father, Pierre Trudeau, was in office as prime minister, he did give his uh, wife to give birth to Justin Trudeau on Christmas Day. So the other answers, Jim Carrey, he did star in a Christmas movie, uh, The Grinch. Michael Buble and Celine Dion do have two well-known Christmas albums, but none of them were born on Christmas Day. Only the prime minister was. See how that impacts the leaderboard. It looks like everyone on the top five did that get that correctly. Their scores have bumped up. And Sturdy Bear is making a comeback with three in a row. So well done. Let's try to shake this up because uh, it is definitely a close race. During the War of 1812, Laura Secord walked 32 kilometers to Beaver Dams to warn British forces of what? Impending American attack, flood of the Niagara River, a surprise visit by the King of England, or the launch of Laura Secord chocolates. Well, certainly as much as I do wish it was the last one, as I am a chocoholic, it was the impending American attack. So well done. Looks like 40, 42 of you did get that one correct. Let's check out how the scores have changed if they have. Looks like the top five did get that correctly. So Glowing Hen has maintained the lead with 17,610 points, followed not far behind by Wonder Wolf and Speedy Otter in third place. Maritime lobsters turn red when cooked. But if a lobster's blood is exposed to oxygen, what color does its, what color does its blood turn? So is it red, blue, brown, or black? So a bit of a weird science question here. Yes, most of you got this correct. They are famous for potentially having blue blood. 39 of you got that correctly. So let's see how that impacts the scores. Oh, quite a few uh, changes here. So Speedy Otter with a hot streak of 10 answers correct in a row is now in second place, not far behind Glowing Hen. And Aquatic New has dropped down to, is now in third. In the Canadian kids TV show, Mr. Dress Up, 
What was hidden inside the tickle trunk? Was it hats and costumes, arts and crafts, toys and games, or pokeroo? So yes, looks like most of you got the answer correct for that one. The name of the show, Mr. Dress Up, is a clue here. It was hats and costumes. Uh, pokeroo, though, as much as we do love pokeroo, pokeroo is from Polka Dot Door, not from Mr. Dress Up. Checking out the leaderboard again. Oh, it looks like Speedy Otter uh, was a Mr. Dress Up fan, is now in the lead with 18,910. Glowing Hun has dropped to fourth place, so we got a new podium here. Things are shaking up considerably. So we still do have 15 questions left, so it is anyone's game. So let's carry on to the next one. What is not a Canadian invention? Egg cartons, paint rollers, road lines, or the term Canadian bacon? Yep, so this one must might surprise a few people, but the most majority of the participants got this correct. It is the term Canadian bacon. So this name was created when it's when the product was first imported from Toronto to New York City and is used primarily in the United States. We use the term penal bacon instead. So we've got lots of penal bacon fans in the crowd, and it looks like it has impacted the scores. So Aquatic New is now in second place. Uh, but Speedy Otter has maintained the lead with 19,579 points. Heading on to the next question. If you have tachophobia, what activity would you be too afraid to do? Climb the Rocky Mountains, swim in Lake Ontario, ride a roller coaster at Wonderland, or feed Twin Valley Zoo animals? Yeah, so this one is a little bit trickier. So the answer is split across the board. Uh, but tachophobia is actually the fear of speed. So if you have that, you would likely be too afraid to ride a roller coaster at Canada's Wonderland. Uh, but good news for those of you who don't have this phobia, Wonderland is reopening soon. So you can get your season passes now and uh, get tickets. And I believe it's in July, it's for opening back up. All right, so we got some changes in scores. Um, clearly, Speedy Otter does not have the fear of speed, so is in the lead with uh, 20,301 points. Uh, Glowing Hen is increasing, and uh, Wonder Wolf is back into the top five uh, with 18,622 points. Next question. What was the RCMP originally known as? Upper Canada Mounted Police, Canadian Pacific Mounted Police, the Northwest Mounted Police, or the Royal Victoria Police Service. All right, so it looks like 12 people were paying attention in high school history class. They got Northwest Mounted Police correct. So the RCMP, RCMP actually formed uh, 101 years ago on February 1st, 1920. So they just surpassed a major milestone. Checking out the scores again. Oh, looks like Great Llama knew that one. Just rocketed back up to 19,475 points into third place, followed behind Aquatic New and Speedy Otter. Next question. Wayne Gretzky played in, on four NHL teams, but only won the Stanley Cup while on the Edmonton Oilers. Is this statement true or false? Couple more seconds on the clock. Yes, it's actually completely true. He only got Stanley Cups when he was with the Oilers. So it looks like we have quite a few hockey fans and Wayne Gretzky fans in the crowd tonight. So let's check out how that impacted the scores. All right, so Lucky Leopard. So that was no lucky answer. You are now back up into the top four, 19,738 points. Wonder Wolf is back there, and they are not far behind reaching the top three uh, behind Great Llama, Aquatic New, and Speedy Otter. All right, so head on, heading on to the next question. True or false? Deborah Brown, Cirque du Soleil's principal choreographer, was born in Montreal, Quebec. True or false?
Oh, so the answer is actually false. The reason being she is an Emmy Award winning, well-known Brantford resident. Deborah Brown is from Brantford. She is quite famous and looks like 15 people got that correct. Well done. Let's check out how that impacted the scores. Oh, it looks like Speedy Otter has dropped to third place and Aquatic New has taken the lead with 21,417 points. Great Llama is not far behind, has moved up to second place. And let's head on to the next true or false question. True or false. The book of Anna Green Gables was originally rejected by every publisher that the author sent the manuscript to. It's got 10 seconds on the clock. If you don't know, I'll always guess. Yes, it's actually completely true. And I'm sure those publishers have lived to regret that one. A well-known book internationally, certainly a Canadian treasure. So 42 of you are definitely Anna Green Gables fans and probably read the book. You got the answer correct. So it looks like quite a few of you got points here and it has not impacted the top five. But Yellow Lobster is making a comeback. Looks like you got three questions in a row. Well done. All right, let's head on to the next question. Another true or false. Quebec pro produces up to 25% of the world's supply of maple syrup. All right, time is up. And it is actually false. So Quebec actually produces over two thirds of the world's supply of maple syrup. So they are it's well, well, well beyond the 25%. But it looks like 16% of the, or 16 players knew that. So they're gonna get quite a boost in points here. Oh, and it looks like Glowing Hen got that one. So it's moved back up into fifth place. And then Royal Stork is back in the game with an answer streak of three in a row. Way to go. Next question. Blinding Lights by the Weekend is the first song to spend an entire year in the top 10 of the Billboard Hot 100 chart. It is absolutely true. Certainly a big hit by the weekend. It did spend quite a long time on the Billboard Hot 100 chart. And unfortunately, despite this, uh, his album, which is fantastic, did not get nominated for Grammys, which is a shame, uh, but did win quite a few Junos, as I understand. So heading on to the next question. All right, well, let's check out the scores first of all. And we had quite a few changes there. So uh, Lucky Leopard is back in the running there in third place, uh, followed by Glowing Hen and Speedy Otter. But Aquatic New is still in the first place, had by only 58 points. What does RCAF stand for? So multiple choice question, Royal Canadian Army Fortress, the Research Canadian Achievement Fund, the Rideau Canal Awareness Foundation, or the Royal Canadian Air Force? Yeah, so the majority of you did get that answer correct. It is the Royal Canadian Air Force. The other three answers I completely made up. So let's check out the scores again. Oh, wow, big change here. So Great Llama has retaken the lead, 24,197 points. Lucky Leopard is now in second place. Aquatic New uh, stays at second or in third place. And then Speedy Otter and Silver Urchin and have moved up into fourth and fifth. So have a good chance of retaking those top spots to win the prizes. And a special shout out to Noble Zebra, who is on a hot streak with four answers in a row. Next question. At the Vancouver Olympics, in the opening ceremonies, one of the cauldron arms malfunctioned. What athlete did this happen to? Rick Hansen, Katrina LeMaydone, Nancy Green, or Steve Nash? So it was one of those embarrassing moments that did happen at uh, the spectacular ceremony. Uh, but it happened to Katrina LeMaydone. So though all four part athletes did participate in light an arm, only three of the arms actually did work. Um, as you see here in the image, that hole there in the top corner with Katrina standing next to it, nothing did come out of it. Um, so what happened in the for the closing ceremonies at the last minute, a comedic segment featuring a clown repairman was added. Uh, so Katrina LeMaydone could light the cauldron too at that point. 
checking out the leaderboard. So that certainly did shake things up. So Silver Urchin has rocketed up to third place and is in the running. Lucky Leopard uh, is on a lucky streak with in second place, 24,366 points. And at reaching almost 25,000 is Great Llama. All right, so we just have a few questions left. So let's head on to the next one. What Canadian city was severely damaged by a massive explosion in its harbor in 1917? Halifax, Montreal, Charlottetown, or Victoria? So those, for those of you who are history buffs or are paying attention in high school history or watching the heritage moments, you are, looks like most of you are, you got the answer correct. It was Halifax. So let's see how that, uh, shake things up with the scoreboard. It looks like the majority of you got it. And Silver Urchin has a hot streak with six correct answers in a row. Well done. All right, let's go on to the next one. Question 44. What Canadian singer was born as Eileen Regina Edwards? Anne-Marie, Avril Lavigne, Alicia Cara, or Shania Twain? All right, time is up. Uh, looks like we got a, quite a few country music and Shania Twain uh, fans in the crowd tonight. Uh, 25 of you got that correct. So as Twain wanted to keep her last name to honor her adoptive father, she opted to change her first name instead to Shania, an Ojibwe word that means I'm on my way. So now we're on our way to the leaderboard. Let's check it out. Okay, so we had some changes. Aquatic New, you are back in the running on the podium. You're in third place. Speedy Otter, obviously a Shania Twain fan, is heading up into fourth place. And uh, the first and second place uh, spots remain the same. Heading on to the next question, multiple choice. The Caesar cocktail recipe originated from Calgary. What ingredients distinguish it from a Bloody Caesar, or sorry, a Bloody Mary? Is it hot sauce, clamato, gin instead of vodka, or same recipe, but a different name in the United States? So the majority of you got it. So I see some Bloody Caesar fans in the crowd. So Clamato juice has a combination of tomato and clams, whereas Bloody Mary uses a tomato vegetable juice instead. Checking out the leaderboards again. Most of you got that right. So things are fairly unchanged. Let's go on to the next one. Who was the only Canadian to achieve the triple crown of acting, having won an Oscar, an Emmy, and a Tony Award? Was it Christopher Plummer, Dan Aykroyd, Ryan Gosling, or Donald Sutherland? All right, so answers are split across the board, but the majority got it correct. It was indeed Christopher Plummer. Unfortunately, this well-known and well-achieved Canadian did pass away last year, uh, leaving quite the legacy for himself, but uh, he did win an Oscar, Emmy, and Tony Award. And let's see what everyone won as a result of getting that answer correct. All right, so we got some changes in score. So Silver Urchin and Wonder Wolf, they're trying to get climb back onto that podium. That uh, Great Llama, Lucky Leopard, and Aquatic New are holding on to with great strength as we are about to hit the last question. And since this is our final question for the night, I thought it'd be appropriate that it be trivia themed. And that being Canadian invented trivial pursuit. So what happens as soon as a player earns their sixth and final pie shaped game piece in the game? The game isn't over yet. The player immediately wins the game, player wins pie for dessert or player wins both pie and the game. Oh, it looks like uh, it's few of you do play trivial pursuit, but the correct answer is the game isn't over yet. In order to win Trivial Pursuit, a player must collect all six colors of pie tokens, then land on the center space on the game board. After that, an opposing player will choose a question of any category that they want, and that player must choose or pick the correct answer in order to win. So it's quite a few steps. But of course, that is not how you win Kahoot Canadian Trivia. That's how we win Trivial Pursuit. By winning uh, this game, you have to win the most points. So let's check out the podium to see who our top three will be. And we'll be taking home some of the fabulous prizes we have for you tonight. 
So drum roll, please. In third place with 32 questions, correct. Aquatic New. In second place, Lucky Leopard. And first place, drum roll once again. Great Llama has won. Well done and congratulations to our top three players. So the top three prizes in third place, the top three prize will be a $25 gift card to Maria's Pizza here in Brantford. A gift card for second place is a $25 gift card to Mercasa Little Italy Eatery. And the grand prize is a $50 gift card to Hudson Public Kitchen and Bar. Great local restaurants. If you did not win tonight, we do encourage you to go check them out as well as any local uh, restaurant in town. We do want to support our local businesses. They've had a hard time and it's patio season now. So after the game, the winners will be contacted by email. Uh, that's why we did have you enter it beforehand and we'll reach out to you to get your mailing address and we'll send out by mail the gift cards to you. So I wanna thank everyone on behalf of the Brantford Canada Day Committee uh, for participating tonight. Uh, we do thank you for taking time out of your evening and hope that you had a lot of fun and excitement. And as well as another special shout out to Lasani Homes for being our proud sponsor this evening. We couldn't do these types of events, whether it's Canada Day or any other event throughout the year without the support of our local sponsors. So we give a big thank you to them once again. And I wanna wish everyone a safe and happy Canada Day tomorrow. Have a good night.